welcome to Friday Night Ghost Frights. This is Hunter Road Media, and I'm your host, author and ghost historian Mike Ricksecker. Some may not believe the things I'm about to describe, but I assure you that everything I'm about to tell you is absolutely true. It is up to you, dear viewer, as to whether you believe me or not. Elizabeth Bathory, most noted in history for her brutality toward young women, was a Hungarian noblewoman born in Transylvania on August 7th, 1560. As had been the case with Vlad the Impaler, her people were in constant war with the Ottoman Turks, a very violent time in history in that part of the world. She was born to extreme wealth and privilege, her family's control over that area complete. In fact, her husband took on her name when they were wed. However, her family was also known for its brutality, a collection of Hungarian and Transylvania princes that would kill their opponents in the most brutal manner or peasants who fell out of line. The torture of servants was part of everyday life. Although her marriage had been arranged since she was three years old, she got along quite well with her husband, Ferenc Nazidi, right down to torturing people together. One such recorded account was of a young girl that they stripped naked, doused in honey, and threw outside for a full day while bees and ants attacked her. While her husband was away at war, Elizabeth was left to rule the empire all on her own. And from all accounts, she did so quite well. But when Faring died in battle when she was age 44, Elizabeth's behavior spiraled out of control. Her obsession became sexuality, youth, and power. With the help of a few favorite servants, including a deformed male dwarf she called Fisgo, Elizabeth is said to have murdered over 600 people. She took to beating, biting, and burning people, but she also used mechanical devices as well, including a cage with spring-loaded blades and another cage that would slowly spear the victim while Fisgo yelled sexual obscenities at them. There were times Elizabeth would kill her victims instantaneously, but many times she enjoyed the slow kill. There were times that she was said to have stripped victims naked, threw them outside in the dead of winter, and poured cold water over them and watched them literally freeze to death on the ground. Of course, there are the legends that gave Elizabeth Bathory her moniker, the Blood Countess. Stories of her bathing in the blood of virgins in order to retain her youthful looks. Some of these legends claim that she was a vampire. The story goes that a young servant girl was brushing Elizabeth's hair and with one stroke pulled a little too hard. Elizabeth smacked the girl for her insubordinates and smacked her so hard that she drew blood. The droplets of blood fell upon Elizabeth's hand and in her eye, the blood gave her hand a more youthful glow about it. Thus, she began bathing in blood, as the legend goes. But there is little evidence to support the claim that she did, in fact, bathe in blood, even with all the atrocities she committed. However, she did take to biting many people during her torture sessions, even to the point of drawing blood with those bites. Elizabeth's downfall could be contributed either to her own carelessness or perhaps her ego after getting away with murder for so many decades. Bodies were carelessly discarded around the land near rivers or simply thrown over the castle wall. But she also upped the ante when she started running out of local girls upon which to pray. She began luring the young daughters of nobility to Chastis Castle in order to learn etiquette. And when they started disappearing, the noble families wanted answers. When an investigation was launched by King Matthias of Hungary, the lead investigator, George Terzo, wrote that upon immediately entering Chastis Castle, they discovered the mutilated body of one of the young servant girls. In all, they discovered nine girls in some sort of mutilated state. Elizabeth was arrested and testimony was collected against her, but she was never actually put on trial. Doing so would have put her in line for execution. Such was not the case for her loyal servants. They were in fact put on trial and three of them were executed. Stories of fingernails being torn off and thrown into fiery pits. Their deaths just as brutal as the ones that Elizabeth had doled out. One other servant was given life imprisonment. Although some called for her torture and execution, Elizabeth Bathory was still a noblewoman after all. So instead she was locked away in one of the rooms in her castle and fed through a slot in the wall until her death in 1614. She was isolated in that room for four long years. There's a lot we don't know about Elizabeth Bathory. Many of the documents that were compiled at the time were destroyed in an effort to hide the atrocities that happened, this blemish upon Hungarian society. There is also no known image of Elizabeth. The paintings that are used to depict her visage are of women that are said to have resembled her appearance. 
And then there are the legends and stories that have cropped up over the centuries, eventually making it to Hollywood to further murky the facts of her life. Today, the ruins of Chastis Castle, abandoned in the 1700s, may still be visited, a haunting visage upon the landscape. The basement of one of the Bathory Manor houses now serves as a winery. The location of where many of the torches had taken place now stores barrels of wine. And they do in fact sell an Elizabeth Bathory themed wine, which is of course, blood red. Thank you for watching Friday Night Ghost Frights. Please let me know what you think of this episode in the comments below. And if you have not yet, please subscribe. I'm Mike Ricksecker. Until next Friday night.